Spyro on GBA is a good game. Not as good as the original Spyro for PS1 in my opinion, but still on the GBA it has a lot of good games. In this one, the game developers integrated very well the key elements of Spyro. For exploration you get around 20 big levels to explore, the game is isometric, this way it is more similar to the classic Spyro game, even have the same moves like breathing fire, jumping and floating, and you can charge at enemies. While roaming the levels you get to interact with many characters and get all sorts of different tasks to do, it's a good game. Back in the day this game was even better because it was a portable Spyro experience. So you had the classic PS1 game that was 3D and awesome at home and on the go you could take this decent Spyro experience with you. But today you can take the classic 3D one with you too. But don't get me wrong, don't view my answers as good or bad or either black or white. Look at the shade. The game is a decent experience. Not good, not bad, but it's still enjoyable and this is valid for the entire Isometric Spiral Trilogy. They are good games. Ok, now differences between the games, on to the next one. Spyro 2 Season of Flame might look like the same game as the previous one, but it isn't. Even if the game formula is the same, it has one new element that changes the game by a long shot. Spyro now has the ability of Ice Breath, aside the already classic Fire Breath. And this, even if it sounds minor, it's a big game changer. Now you get all sorts of puzzles where you need to combine the two breasts. There are enemies that have a certain strategy to them, you need to alternate with breaths again. And this makes the game more interesting. Also now, instead of flying levels, you get some classic platforming levels. Also another aspect that I liked about Spyro 2 were the level designs, that are more ok and less confusing than in the first one. Spyro Adventures, also called Attack of the Rhinox, is the third game of the isometric Spyro trilogy on the GBA. And this one is unique too, this time the game focuses more on exploration than on the action. Meaning that you get a lot of tasks to complete and you will have to run back and forth on the maps. Imagine the experience like a Legend of Zelda game. And being more RPG like, with the tasks and talking with characters, it gets to be unique from the other two. Also, since you have to do a lot of exploration, which occasionally consists on flying off all sorts of platforms and, well, there are a lot of risky jumps, you get a very good checkpoint system, so that you can risk jumps, because you will be reset it not far off. Also, just like in the other two games, here too you get different gameplay moments. Spiral Orange, the Cortex Conspiracy, is a crossover with Crash Bandicoot. You won't play with Crash in this one, as Crash has a separate game in this crossover, but you will encounter characters from Crash Bandicoot. This time, the game isn't isometric anymore, but it's a side-scroller. There are 5 worlds, each world consists of 2 main levels. But even if it's a side-scroller, you still get the same moves like breathing fire, dashing, double jumping and floating. And at the end of each world, there is a minigame you need to complete to clear the world. And once you've completed all 5 worlds, you can proceed to the final boss. Spyro Orange is a decent game, but I will prefer Crash Purple or the other Spyro games from the Isometric Trilogy over it. The Legend of Spyro A New Beginning retells the origins of the character. Story-wise, it's a good game, but something about the combat wasn't that enjoyable. I can't put my finger on it. It can't be the repetitiveness, I mean, I've played other games that had only a few attacks and were great. I don't know, but something about the combat felt off. In Rust, it's your normal GBA side-scroller, with vehicular levels in between and boss fights, and if you've played GBA games, you know what I mean by vehicular and flying levels. Also, some boss fights were creative and original, and some level designs too. And in combat you can zap enemies, or use fire breath and frost breath. And I like the integration of 3D looking enemies. Overall it's a good game. 
The Legend of Spyro The Eternal Night is short, but it sure breathes quality throughout the whole playthrough. The visuals are amazing for a GBA and the music and sound effects create a nice atmosphere too. The combat is simple, it has the same series of attacks, but in spite being repetitive, it looks amazing every time. This one, in spite being a short game, sure is amazing. It is short, but it has a lot of quality. Ok, short meaning 2 or 3 hours long, so it's not that short, but while you play it, after you finish it, you just realize, man but, wait, this game was short, and then you look how much time you spend on the game and see, oh, it was a normal game. Now that is quality, that is quality, oh and speedruns managed to finish the game in around half an hour. Oh, and this game doesn't have variety to it. You just platform and that's about it. You don't get mini games, flying levels, vehicular levels. No, it's just platforming. But it's very enjoyable. Okay, so this was the video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and subscribe. And if you want, follow me on Twitch, Instagram or Discord. I left the links to those in the video description. Also, if you want to see another video of mine, just wait till I stop talking and there will be thumbnails of other videos I've made. Thanks for watching.